Good morning, good morning on day five on the Camino Primitivo. Check out the spooky environment that I'm walking in. I've been in this for about an hour already. When I left uh, the albergue at six o'clock, it was pitch black. You can see the glow from the light. At the albergue, I set the alarm for 5.40 and three other pilgrims did the same. So we all headed to the kitchen where I had my breakfast uh, that I bought yesterday. I had like yogurt. I also had a banana and the albergue gave us like a small uh, bag last night. So I had a banana. No, I had an orange juice, a snack and uh, they had another fruit that I, I just didn't like. So I've been walking in the darkness, in the mist. You know, some cars will pass by, I will turn on my headlamp, I have my poncho just because of the condensation. Walking on the road for the majority of the time until we detour from it into this uh, path, the one that we've been used to walking all this time. And I finally made it those five first kilometers to the town of Borres. There's a sign for the municipal albergue, which is closed, and there's a water fountain here. There's another sign for a bar, so let's go there, see if I can have my cafe con leche, and then start today's climb. Cause we're going up, up, up. So of course, the bar is closed. Who in their right mind would open up a bar in a small town like this at 7 a.m.? You have to be crazy. So yeah, we started the climb already. All the layers came off. I have plenty of water for uh, today's stage. I have about two liters, which we already know that weighs about what, like five pounds. So my backpack is full. I also have a sandwich that I made myself yesterday. I have another banana and I have an orange and I still have some uh, leftovers from the trail mix that I got on the San Salvador. So I think I should be covered when it comes to food and water. So yeah, right now I'm on the silk trail. You know what that is? All the spider webs are in my face. <laughs> I'm clearing up the path for everybody behind me. Haven't seen anybody yet, either in front or behind. But you know how it is, if you stop for a little bit, someone is bound to pass you by. So we've made it to uh, the split on the road. We have an option to make here, even though I already know what I'm gonna do. But if you go right, you go through the Hospitales route. What's that route all about? Well, you got a few ruins up there on the mountains. We're climbing. It's a little bit shorter, but you know, we're up there, no support whatsoever. If we go left, we go to Pola de Allende. That is supposed to be the new official Camino. They have a town there, of course, Pola de Allende. That's where I was trying to find a place to stay uh, yesterday, but I couldn't find it. That one, you go down at first, and then you have all the way at the end of the stage, a massive climb. Everything that we climb on the Hospitale, you gotta do it all at once. But you do have all the support uh, down there. So here's another uh, tip. Here in Asturias, they actually use the shell to point in that direction instead of the arrow. I mean, they, they use both, but you can also follow uh, the shells. If you see all the lines are pointing towards this uh, end of the shell, and that means that you're supposed to follow it in that direction. I mentioned this at a, at a Facebook uh, group and I was eating alive, you know, because they say that that is not true. It is not true in all the Caminos that I've done, but I've noticed on the Norte and now here on the Primitivo, when you're in Asturias, they're very true to that. I would always follow 
the yellow arrows, but in my case, I have my GPS tracks, just saying. Now you may be asking yourself, why am I taking the Hospitales route if it's foggy, completely foggy, and I may not get any views up there? Well, that was exactly my thought yesterday, but I just could not find a place to stay in Pola. So if I were to go in that direction, then today would be a very, very long day, probably getting closer to 40 kilometers. So no, I didn't come to this uh, trip to be doing double stages as I used to do before. It is the opposite. I do not have a flight back home, so I want to take my time. We started climbing. Can you tell? Walking, talking, climbing, not a great combination. What a difference in the landscape, right? I think that you need days like this, you know, just to break up the monotony of the trip. The last few days has just been uh, blue skies and scorching sun. And it wouldn't even surprise me if today in the afternoon, I get a little bit of that. Today might be the day where I go through everything. Have not seen a single pilgrim or a person for that matter in uh, today's stage. I don't know if I'm ahead, if I'm behind the bubble. I mean, I know the people in my albergue, I was the first one out. So they're probably behind me, the ones that are coming this way, because I'm sure a large portion of them are gonna go in the other direction. The ones that stay in these towns are either just waking up right now, or they're just in front of me. We'll see, we'll see. after climbing for what about two hours made it to the first ruins and that is the ruinas del hospital de paradiella what little remains here in the fog made it to the top of the mountain of the dragon's lair <laughs> i mean it is a setting right so this is the first one of three and of course the wind starting to pick up that might be a good thing because it's gonna blow the mist away.
So after climbing and climbing through the fog, we finally made it to the ruins of the second Hospital de Fonfaraón. I also got to see a bunch of cyclists and uh, pilgrims up there at the marker. I guess that would be like the highest point of the day. I'm not quite sure, but the fog cleared up and we got majestic views above the clouds in every direction just for a small window and then it came back in. And it's just been a magical day with the fog, seeing the animals, the silhouettes. Check out this place. <laughs> Most of the pilgrims that I've seen up there were staying in the same place that I was staying uh, yesterday. So let's continue. Behind me are the last ruins and those are the Hospital de Valparaíso with that mountain behind it, great views. These ruins, man, it's just a collection of rocks, you know. The second one at least had kind of like a little house, but uh, very little remains. Can see the fog coming this way already. Look at that. It is 11 o'clock already and I'm thinking I should have uh, lunch. <laughs> since I had breakfast at 6 in the morning. Been snacking with all the stuff that I bought at the supermarket, so it was a good call to do that. Whenever you see you're gonna be out in a stretch with a very little support, if you can hit a supermarket and get just enough to last you, it is just uh, the best. I can picture myself being out here without uh, any water, especially water. I brought two liters of water and I think I already drank one. So lunch, ham and cheese sandwich, <laughs> yep. What goes up must come down. We're right here at 11.05 uh, meters of elevation, but we were higher before. Making our way down through the mist, there was a cow in the path. I had to wait for it to decide to get out of the way because on either side, it was just those little thorn plants and uh, you know, can't do that. Look at this. Here's another one. What's up, buddy? Don't be afraid. Or should I be afraid? <laughs> you know, most people complain about the climbs and they don't realize that the coming downhill is the worst. <sighs> right after the juncture between the Ruta de Hospitales and the official Camino, I saw the, the Americans from Michigan. There are a few other, uh, you know, tourists there in the, in the viewpoint, which was completely obscured by the fog. And then from then on, it's just a steep decline over these loose uh, rocks. You gotta be careful, I don't wanna slip. Whew. At least, I think I'm past the 75% of the way for today. So it is already noon. I guess I'll be making it into town around two, maybe three. The last push, man.
You know, I usually find uh, a water tap in a, in a cemetery, but this one is dry. It actually looks like uh, people don't come by often because there's just like vegetation growing everywhere. Wow, man, that last push is a killer. I thought it was gonna be easier, but no. Good thing is that uh, up ahead, at least I have on my GPS, uh, what is it, uh, a cafe? A bar, fingers crossed, <laughs> it is open. I still have just a little bit of water, but uh, you know, I also have like five kilometers to go into town. So it would be nice to get some water now. The sun is just brutal right now. I think it's like 80 degrees or something. And with the humidity, I'm just sweating like crazy. I think I spoke too soon because at Iglesia de Santa Maria del Lago, which is right behind me, which is closed, I found a water tap. So it's all good. I'm still heading towards that cafe so that I can have that coffee that I didn't have this morning and maybe even a caña. What do we have here? Let's do it. Will you believe it? No such luck with the bar. I don't know. It was just a house. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I'm sweating profoundly. I'm glad that I got water at the church. There was nothing in the whole stretch. At least now I'm entering this patch of woods. Woo! Wow. So much needed shade. Look at that. Look at the difference between this and this over here. No transition, just by cut. I love it. Look at this place, man. Wow. Made it to town just before at 3 p.m. and I headed over to a bar just to get a snack because, you know, I needed it. I had a Coke, some uh, pancake, and coffee. Having had coffee today and I was getting a slight uh, headache. Right now, let's just go to the pension, the hostel where I'm staying, the albergue, which is 0.5 of a mile because it's on the other side of this very small town. It's only like two bars here in the main street of course if you're in a small town and you want to find a place to eat just head over to the main street <sighs> can't wait to get that shower man my god today more than any other day <laughs> on all the caminos that i've done uh, back to back now it is such a hot day it's like 28 degrees like 80 degrees fahrenheit and i just uh, i'm covering sweat and also mud. Look at this, what do we have here? Another bar. Nice. Verducedo, Verducedo. What can I say about this small little village? Nothing to do here, but it's just full of pilgrims. There's like three albergues, private ones, of course, the municipal one is closed. So I've just been hanging out in one because the one where I'm staying doesn't have any meals or anything like that. I, uh, when I got here, I did uh, wash all my clothes. My legs were just full of mud from uh, today's uh, walk. And then, uh, you know, took a nap because I was just beat today. Then I went to the center of town where they have a small uh, supermarket and I got some yogurt for tomorrow morning for breakfast. The thing is that where I'm staying, they only have like coffee and milk. There's a town like four kilometers away. So that's where I'm thinking of having a breakfast tomorrow, but I'm gonna have yogurt just to get the day started. 
I was having dinner with my American friends from uh, from Michigan. They actually treated me uh, to dinner, so thank you guys. So guys, that's it for today. Day five, the toughest day on the Camino Primitivo. Not because of the climb, but just because there was no support whatsoever. I mean, there was a stretch there for like over 10 kilometers where there wasn't even water. And then the heat, the heat, you know, I can walk in the cold all you want. That's why I do most of my Caminos in April, but the summer heat. All right, guys, thank you so much. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Tomorrow is a short 20 mile day, 20 kilometer day, and we're gonna get to walk by a lake, around the lake. So it should be amazing views for, uh, for the journey. See ya.